Is constellation best seen during the winter months, from the beginning of December through to the end of March, if you live in northern latitudes, that is. Orion represents a hunting man, and the pattern of stars that we know today would be recognised by the ancient Greeks and Egyptians. He can be found rising in the southeast during the mid-evening in early December, and is due south at the same time of the evening in the middle of January. Orion can be best recognised by the three stars that mark his belt. In fact, these three well-known stars are part of a cluster called Colander 70. This cluster is made up of around 150 stars. However, it is the belt stars to which the eye is inevitably drawn. These stars are named from left to right Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka. The hunter's right shoulder, that is on the left hand side of the constellation, is marked by the brilliant orange coloured star Betelgeuse, more commonly known as Betelgeuse. This is a red giant star some 800 times larger than our own sun and 20 times its mass. It is thought that one day, sometime in the next 10,000 years or so, Betelgeuse will explode in a colossal supernova explosion. That will certainly be worth watching. Compare Betelgeuse to the star at the bottom right of the constellation called Rigel, marking Orion's left foot. You will notice straight away that Rigel is brilliant white in colour compared to the striking orange of Betelgeuse. Rigel is a white supergiant star, 17 times as massive as our sun and some 40,000 times as bright. It is a double star, that is, it shares a common centre of gravity with another much fainter star. But you are unlikely to see this companion star in anything less than a telescope of 8 inches or 200 millimetres in aperture. The two other named stars in Orion are Bellatrix and Safe. Bellatrix is the third brightest star in the constellation and marks the hunter's left shoulder. Safe, diagonally opposite Bellatrix, at the bottom left of the constellation, marks his right knee. Both Bellatrix and Safe are likely to end their lives in supernova explosions as well. Now, I would draw your attention back to the belt stars. Hanging from Orion's belt is a faint line of stars, his sword, that appear to become somewhat fuzzy. This misty patch of light can just be detected by the naked eye from a dark sky sight, but you will find that it stands out in a simple pair of binoculars. This is the Great Orion Nebula, or otherwise known as M42, being the 42nd entry in Messier's famous catalogue of 110 deep sky objects. If you own a telescope of practically any size, point it at the Orion Nebula and feast your eyes. Use a low to medium power eyepiece and you will notice that this region of sky appears slightly dusty. Now, studying the area for a little longer, you will hopefully make out some structure to this nebula, perhaps a few wisps and tendrils. Using a higher power eyepiece and looking at the middle of the nebula, you should notice a group of four bright stars. These are the trapezium stars, given their name from the geometric pattern that they mark out, and they have been born out of this nebula. They are, cosmically speaking, very young stars, and the ultraviolet light that they are emitting has blown a hole in the nebula, allowing us to get a glimpse at them and the inside of the nebula itself. Now, moving back up towards the belt stars a little, you may notice another small misty patch this time considerably smaller than M42. This is M43, often overlooked due to its brighter and more illustrious neighbour. It is a small, comma-shaped object that also goes under the name of the Moran's Nebula. It surrounds a modest star of 7th magnitude and you can find it just slightly northeast of M42. It does look a bit like a comma and is separated from M42 by a dark dust lane. About a half a degree, or one moon width's distance above or to the north of the Great Orion Nebula, is another area of nebulosity given the catalogue number NGC 1977. It is also known as the Running Man Nebula. Now this is quite a bit harder to see, 
But if you have a telescope of at least four inches or 100 millimeters in diameter, you should be able to make out the dark shape of the running man from a dark sky sight on a moonless night. The constellation of Orion is in fact filled with nebulosity, but much of it can only be seen clearly in long exposure photographs and images. Perhaps one of the most famous of all the nebula in Orion, apart from the Great Nebula that is, is the Horse's Head Nebula. If you have any hope of finding this, unless you have a large telescope and a very dark sky sight that is, you will need a filter known as an H-beta or hydrogen beta filter used in conjunction with your telescope eyepiece. You can find the horse's head by going back to the belt star Alnitak, one on the left hand side of the belt, and travelling down towards the star's safe. Again, about half a degree. The head looks like a silhouette against the fate of nebulosity behind it. It has sometimes been described as looking like the chess piece of the knight lying on its side. Also, lying very near the star Almatak, is another interesting nebula known as the Flame Nebula, for reasons that will become obvious the moment that you detect it. Again, this is all part of the complex region of nebulosity that inhabits this whole area. Orion also plays host to a number of interesting double stars, many of which can be split easily in a small telescope. Rigel itself is a double star, but for this one you will need a larger telescope um, to show its much fainter companion star lying 10 arc seconds to its south. Mintaka or Delta Orionis is also a double star and is a good test for small telescopes as the companion star is tricky to see past the glare of the much brighter primary. Head back to Orion's sword and the brightest star at the end of the chain of stars marking the hunter's sword is Iota Orionis. This is again a bright and a fainter star but should not be too difficult in a small telescope. Finally, although there are many other interesting double stars in the constellation, take a look at Lambda Orionis, called Mesa. This is quite a tight double star, the companion being only 4.4 arc seconds from the primary, and somewhat fainter. So there you have it, just a few of the sights that you can see in this superb constellation. I hope that you enjoyed our tour, and thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. I wish you clear skies.